longitude. And now, history. Maps, stars, spheres, and clocks. Imagine you're in the middle of the ocean. Without the help of a modern GPS, how would you determine your position? We measure position on Earth in latitude and longitude. How far north or south you are is measured by degrees north or south of the equator. Zero degrees if you are at the equator and up to 90 degrees at the poles. Maps show latitude as horizontal lines which make circles around the globe. The equator is the largest circle made by a line of latitude, while the lines of latitude nearer the poles make smaller circles. How far east or west you are is measured by degrees from an arbitrary reference line called the Prime Meridian, which passes through the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, England. You can be up to 180 degrees east or west of the Prime Meridian. Each line of longitude runs through both poles, making each circle the same size. Using a grid system like this for determining position on our planet is quite old. The first evidence we have of someone dividing up the world was Ptolemy in 150 AD who created an atlas that used a grid of lines. The horizontal lines, the precursors to latitude, were based on how long the longest day of the year was at that location, with the areas nearer the poles having very long days during summer. People have been able to find their north and south positions for a long time using references to the sun, moon, the planets and stars. Such positions were measured using an astrolabe. Historical evidence indicates that the Phoenicians in 600 BCE had techniques including calculating heights of heavenly bodies from the horizon at a certain time. It was straightforward enough to calculate latitude, but longitude? As a general rule, once people lost sight of the land, they didn't really have a reliable way of figuring out their longitude or how far east or west they had gone. Being lost without any landmarks also applied inland, such as deserts or in unfamiliar mountain ranges. This meant that while a ship's captain may know that there were dangers up ahead, but they would not know how far until they reached them. It was also hard to know how fast you were going and if you had enough supplies to reach your destination. The key to being able to calculate longitude was knowing the time. Travelling east, local time moves ahead one hour for each 15 degrees of longitude. The opposite for each 15 degrees you move west. If you know what time it is in a referent point, you can figure out the time where it is now using the sun and you compare the distance between those two times to calculate your longitude. A Dutch mathematician, Gemma Frysis, proposed using clocks to keep time in 1530, but no clocks were accurate enough to do this even on land, and at sea clocks were less reliable due to the motion of the sea as well as changes in temperature and humidity that could mess up the inner workings. After a series of naval tragedies, many nations, including Spain, England and France, decided that reliably determining longitude was a top priority. Thousands of pounds were offered to anyone who could prove a reliable system. But without a reliable seaworthy clock, other crazier systems were dreamt up, including anchoring ships at regular intervals across the whole ocean to fire cannons simultaneously like a worldwide alarm clock. Discovering latitude became a synonym for something completely impossible. Eventually, a self-taught clockmaker, John Harrison, who made his first pendulum clock at the age of 20, almost entirely from wood, spent over 30 years perfecting a clock that would reliably operate at sea, avoiding using materials that were affected by moisture or humidity and clock mechanisms that would not be thrown off by the rocking of the sea. Eventually, his clock was reliable enough to enable seamen to accurately measure their longitude to the nearest half of a degree. By the 1780s, using a clock, or chronometer to take a longitude reading became a common part of ship's logs. A reproduction of Harrison's most advanced clock was carried by Captain James Cook on his second voyage, who was glowing in his review after his voyage. It exceeded the expectations of its most zealot advocate. Many ships had more than one clock. For the sake of redundancy and accuracy, they would take the same reading with lots of different clocks. The HMS Beagle had 22 clocks when Charles Darwin began his voyage. So next time you want to know where you are, all you need is a clock, a way to measure the position of the stars at night, or that one big star during the day, and to compare where the stars would be at your reference point. You can calculate your longitude and latitude.